All right, good evening, everybody. Tonight, we're going to have Kevin Bassett teaching us how to do Christmas ornaments. He did this for the class Saturday. It was a very good class, so I'm looking forward to seeing Kevin's way of doing ornaments. Kevin? Yes. Show? All right. Um, so it's not really my way of doing ornaments, um, but I did check out everything in the library about ornaments last year month. So I found this one down at uh, SWAT. Where are you? There we go. You don't have that on. Yeah. There we go. Turning holiday ornaments. So it has a number of different ones, like the one on there. And they actually have this. This particular ornament I'm going to try is called the icicle ornament. Okay, so um, since I won tonight, I think I will donate this to our library, so you all want to check this out. It's a pretty good little publication. AAW's got it. I think it cost me 15 bucks. So uh, we'll, we'll throw that in with the library and let you all use it anytime you want. Check it out. And um, now there's all different ways and um, you know, there, I, I probably looked at three or four different people that had done ornaments. And I think of most of us that have been around the club for very long have probably seen Brian's excellent demo on ornaments. And he's got some, you got rules about how long the thing, the icicle should be compared to the ball diameter? Yeah, well, I did too. And I just go by what looks okay. If it looks right, it's right. So, but, you know, and I've made them with, you know, really long icicles, you know, made them with, um, so, and, and size doesn't really matter all that much either, I mean, except for hollowing something that big takes a lot more time, did you want me to set it up here, just hold it up a little higher, how about like that? Okay, so you can make big ones. You can make itsy bitsy ones. It's not hollow, but but this one is. Um, um, a hollowing tool. <laughs> wood bore. Um, this one, these are mine. Uh, I, um, Johnny Tolly was really nice and donated some ornaments. I'm going to put it right here. Let me see if I can get a hold of the grip of it. I'll put it right up here. So that's a Johnny Tolly ornament. And it, it's very nice. And the thing that's great about ornaments is it, um, you get to practice a lot of different wood turning skills. There's the outer shape form of the globe. There's, um, you have to hollow it to get the weight down so it doesn't just pull the boughs on the tree down to the ground. And then there's this really detailed is where you want to get um, a spindle turning aspect to it. And so that's the real, the hollowing the globe in the globe is the easy part. The hard part is doing the icicle. So I'm gonna try and kind of burn through doing the globe hollowing and I may not waste a lot of time hollowing. It shouldn't take very long anyway. Um, so, um, you all know I'm an arborist and one of the trees I really hate and I've been trying to eliminate from our, uh, is an introduc introductory thing called uh, uh, Japanese, Japanese ligustrum. How many of you all have that ugly shrub in your yard? <laughs> well, it turns out it has a very nice wood and it turns pretty good. Um, and it's very light colored, so I like that. So um, we just start and kind of get a rough outer shape going on this guy. And um, trying to hit, shoot me in the head. You feel like, like a deer. It's hunting season getting close, you know. Yeah. 
So in the way I'm doing it, the finial's gonna go down here. The icicle's this way, that's the top. So towards the headstock's gonna be the top. Um, it's a, it's a gouge. It's about a, what's that, three-eighths? Yeah, detail gouge, maybe. You can call it a bowl gouge. Um, it's a, it's a nice U-shaped in there. Hey, you know what, on this tool stuff, if you like the way it turns for you, use that one. It doesn't matter that much. It's got a bevel, it's got an edge. That's all I care about. If it's got a bevel and an edge, we can make it work. So, um, yeah, if you can't, your edge isn't edged. So you can make these all different shapes. You can make them perfectly round spheres. You can make them, you know, egg shape. You can make them pear shape. You can make them whatever shape you want. Um, so there's not a lot of rules. Um, since we're going to be hollowing from here, um, you don't want to worry too much about your final shape up there on the top. But one of the things I learned from Donald Derry was um, to leave kind of a definite edge there so that you could see the form and imagine that, that form going right on around. So you want to leave a very definite stopping spot when, you're, when you go to the hollow. make this a little bit smaller because I don't want to hollow that much. Steve Wooster says the most boring thing to do in a demo is hollow. So I gotta agree with him. It's not much fun watching somebody hollow. I'm going to leave it about that fat. Um, all right. I'm going to get another shot at this thing down the road if I need to. So uh, The next thing to start the hollowing, I find it works a lot real good to you know, use a Forstner bit, help you out a little bit. And when you're first doing these, I'm going to use a 5 8 here. Uh, you can use 5 8 you can use 3 quarter, you can use the inch, whatever. You, the idea is uh, to have enough room to get in there with the, with the hollowing tool. So um, just this kind of, because I, I do things not so exact. Let me just kind of look there and, um, yeah, somewhere about in there. About, about at the top of the five on the five eighths there. And if you happen to go all the way through, then you can try the technique where you drill all the way through. This one, this one, I'm the the top piece. Instead of making a whole different finial for the top, um, Martin said he always does a different top. I don't always. Some of those are got little caps on them. Some of a couple of them are just like I'm doing this one. So the advantage to doing this is mm, it makes it a little easier. Um, well, you don't have to make the top finial mainly, but it's it's probably a little easier to. Uh, reverse this to do the top. Um, so, hollowing tools. So, is Todd here tonight? Todd? No Todd. Todd left. 
Smell again. Well, his bright idea was, so there's all kinds of hollowing tools. Um, Robert Sorby makes a nice little set like this. Yeah, put it in front of the piece. Okay, so that's a Sorby. Um, that one's been ground to nothing. It used to go around there a little bit further, actually. Um, there's another Robert Sorby. I think this little guy has three, a straight, and um, this little hook tool. And the handle, and it's that whole set about 70 bucks. I don't, this was a three piece set. Don't remember how much I paid for that little years and years ago. Um, well, Todd had the idea that, well, you know what? You can go down to um, every Turner's favorite place, Harbor Freight Tools, and they have a, it's called a mechanics pick set. So there's, all these little ones, show it to you there. Show it to you right there. So I, I've sliced it off, but these, um, see if I can get one out. This would be the one that can probably get you in the most trouble. Okay, so that's the way they start. Um, and that wouldn't look like too much of a turning tool, but with a little time on your grinder, you can make it look like that. And see, I've ground, have you got it? Right by the hole in the piece, like that. Yeah, I do. Yeah, right there. So that's good. So from that, won't even stay in the frame to that. And the reason to grind it back that far is because you're way off the axis, center axis here. If you left the, if you just tried to put an edge out there and left that long, when you touch the inside of that, you take that tool and flip it right over. So uh, you want this to be fairly short. Uh, you grind a flat. You there? Now I ground this flat right here. And then I just put a little curve on it right around there. And, um, and that will do my hollowing job for me for $9 for a set of seven. Three of them are big, and then there's, if you want to delve into the miniature world, there's four little miniature tools that you can grind and make miniature tools out of. So, and, and they're okay. I mean, it's not like M4 or Cairo or any of that stuff. I mean, it's a cheap little tool, but for doing this stuff, I mean, you really don't need, you know, a hundred dollar tool to do this kind of work. It's called a mechanics pick set. Uh huh. Yeah, it's for picking O rings and such. So I'm gonna get that out of my way. Make sure I don't have something sitting there, so I don't bang my elbow into it and make myself angry. Um, so I can, I'm going to lower that a little bit. The new lathe's kind of stiff. So, wouldn't you know I get it dull? I thought I'd sharpen that. So it's just kind of back and forth. since that's not very sharp. Let me see if I got a, another tool that maybe is. Oh yeah. Hollowing's more of a pain in the neck than just about anything. You're kind of just trying to follow that inside of that curve. And I, I can almost do it blindfolded by feel because you can't see in there anyway. So you kind of have to develop your sense of where you're at.
when that kind of fails. Um, and one of the things that I don't, I suppose you could copy this. These, these little calipers, and I'm sure they're quite expensive. I don't remember what I paid from them, but they're from Andre, Andre Martel. And I love these things. And so, you know, it's got two ends, and so I love this one because I can just stick that in there and, and I can read my thickness right there. Can you see that? Got that? And see, so down here, and, the, and I'm, a, you know, I'm getting pretty wide there. I'm, I don't know how much. So I'm a little thinner up there at the top. And I may just make one more pass down through that thing and, and just make it a little bit thinner. Same, famous last words, right? Henry, you didn't blow up this part. It was, it was the icicle that was killing you, wasn't it? Uh, this says 2,000, and um, <laughs> that's too slow. So Preston, you said you were from the Fort Worth Club, right? Um, do you have a long lost brother over there named John Horn? Okay, good. What? Not mine. No. No, I taught myself, and then, and then Roger um, said, uh, "Well, Kev, um, you know, I went over to Jimmy's shop, and Arlie's was there, but Roger came up first and said, do you you know, have you ever turned before? Yeah, I've turned before. He says, well, do you know what a bevel is? I said, what's a bevel? And then Roger would always tell me, just keep making shavings, Kevin. That's what you're good at. So, and, uh, and Jimmy taught me that if you blow something up, it's just a design opportunity. So just keep turning. So that's, that's kind of the, um, the way this goes. Now, um, I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit more refinement on the outside now. And I got that small enough, I can get my little finger in there. So, just to see where we ended up. Okay, so that's. Well, I'm down there away, so. That doesn't matter. That's right. You couldn't see it, you know, why bother? So I'll make another quick pass around the outside of this thing and we'll be ready to move on to the next phase here. I have to remember that this is hollow so I don't go through from this side. All right. So everybody knows that that's called shear cutting or shear scraping, right? Probably be smarter if I just stayed on the bevel, but. Get rid of some of that. Now would be the time to sand. Um, I don't want to, you know, probably worse than demo and um, hollowing is probably demo and sanding. So we'll make that really quick. 180. Don't skip the grits too much. You don't want to go from that to, uh, heck, I don't have any 240, so just go to this one. There we go. Mm. 
Look at that little piece of ash go. I have enough of these laying around, I'll eventually find one. All right, so there's the makings of our globe, and this is going to be the top um, where we're going to connect things. So I had to figure out a way to hold that so I can turn the little top part. And um, I think I'll cheat and... Um, and use the, um, I need to start looking for stuff on this lathe. It takes me a while to figure out where everything is. So that's going to be the icicle, but it's also going to help me. I'm thinking. All right. I'm thinking jam chucks, what I'm thinking. So... I had this between centers, so I want to go ahead and find my old center. Why not? And I'm going to tighten this. Back and forth a couple times. So the jaws kind of squeeze it evenly all the way around. Okay. So that's got to be five-eighths or smaller, right? Funny that little live center makes more noise than that does. got to be smaller than that. Hope I don't have to grind up that new live center to make it fit. Craig may not like me for that. What'd you do to my lathe? I just gave it some character. y'all made ornaments before besides Mark? Charlie? Yeah, some of you. About half. And he done it this way. No? Alright, so I can... That's cool. I'll make this a little bit concave so it just sits down there a little better, maybe. Maybe. We can get this to turn a little more on the true side. I'm going to take what we get.
so we'll turn this down now. Yeah, a little wobbly. If I left enough wall thickness there, I should be okay. Go back and... Huh? You want to make bets? Do we want to blow it up or are we just having fun tonight? All right, so... That, about a quarter inch detail gouge? You're out of focus there. That's out of focus. Is it, is it all right up there? Okay. It looks like that to me too. <laughs> it's, a little, it's a little fuzzy. So, um, obviously, that's way too big. This top is way too big to the ball there as a globe. So I'm going to take some of this away. And about that much of it you can't use anyway because it's got a hole in it. Although, we are going to drill a hole in it anyway, so... Yeah, well, I, you know what? I've already gone past that. So we can start... Um, A bead for the top and a cove for the bottom. I wish you were doing this, Brian. Yeah, no, he's he's back there. I can hear him, you know, I can hear him thinking. He's going, I wouldn't do it that way. I'd never do that. I can hear him. What's he doing that for? I can hear him. All right, so I'm about ready to go ahead and finish this guy off. I had enough of this globe. I already sanded it once, but what the heck? We might as well. Anything that's worth doing once is worth doing twice, right? There's the one. There's this. There's this.
Well, they just did 120. You gonna give me hell about all these tool marks in here? <laughs> these sandy marks? No? I, I'll give this one to the club and they can see what they can get for it at the Christmas party. How's that? Alright, we're done with that. Um, except I do want to get. Sorry. Yeah. We'll rattle that thing around some more. Okay. Martin would never do it that way. Usually I use a skew, but I'm afraid I cut myself. It's a, one thing about this Ligustrum, it's some soft stuff. And it's kind of got a little spall to it. And we can go ahead and... Um, so there's a million different ways. Martin, I noticed you had one of the fancy little hooks, little screw things that you put in the top there to hang it. Um, I'm too cheap for those. What do those things cost? About 15 cents? 20 cents? Well, what's right? What what's right? What's what's right or wrong when it comes to wood turning? Yeah. Well. It's it's called a different way to do it. So what I did is I took me a little piece of gold wire. I'm gonna set this right here for you, Ken. I twisted around and I made me a little eye. So we can hang it. You got that? There you go. And um, I'm going to use this ingenious device called a pin vise, and I'm going to drill out my little hole in here. Now, I suppose if you were gripping it some other way where you could get to it, you could put this hole in there on the lathe, but eh. Yeah, mono. Well, I didn't bring the super glue to die, but a drop of super glue and a little bit more widening on that, and that screws in almost as good as yours does. So, Will, while I'm doing this, I'll pass this around. So. I'm done with the pin vise. Yeah, go ahead and pull it out and break it. That's okay. Something's moving around in here. I'm not, I'm not on my center anymore. I wonder why. It's a new lathe. It's still moving around. Hmm? Yeah, the bearings are, are out, or they're rough. Probably helps if you can get that handle past that. Not too many designs. Yeah, you know what? What, does that unscrew? No? I don't know what that's all about. We'll have to write Laguna and let them tell us how to use their lathe. Send them a demo tape. What's wrong with this? What's up with that? All right, this is the hard part. Um, and I'm going to try and stay between centers because I want the support because we are about six inches long or so here. Um, and I'm going to start on, you, you do this in segments, and I've already got the first segment already halfway done. 
So I'll do this, then I'll do this, then I'll do this, and I'll do the end. And um, since I punched a hole in there that was 5 eighths, I should be able to cut me a 5 eighths 10 in here, part that off, and leave that stuff that's sitting down in the chuck, and we should be pretty close to done. Um, Jimmy, you want to do this part? <laughs> well, we'll see about that. <laughs> Um, you can you can use a skew and do this stuff. Um, I'm I'm still a, I'm still an old gouge hand. I'm gonna get a little bit closer to my work, and I'm gonna do the the bottom of the icicle, the very bottom, and I'm not gonna cut through right there. I'm going to leave just a little bit there to come back and get at the very end of this. And I always try and think about Brian's um, beautiful, voluptuous curves he puts on these. And, and you know what? That's one of the problems of using Ligustra. This wood is not real stout. So we'll just, you know what? It's going to just be a little bit shorter. how you do that. At least it wasn't a, you know, a piece of African blackwood. You know, if I'd have done it with a piece of African blackwood, maybe I'd get angry. So, once again, try and get, think of Brian's voluptuous finials. They are, they are voluptuous. They're so curvy. I love the way you turn, buddy. Okay, so the end of that's going to be that way, so I'm okay. And we can start working it back. And so the those were the bead cuts, and then here's a cove. Yeah, so with the cove cut, I'm going in pretty much, I'm trying, if you're doing an ideal cove, it, the bevel would go in at 90, and then turn up and kind of scoop it out um, to wide open up that way. So, when you get down in here, sometimes, okay, so this, um, the tool rest that came with the Laguna is this great big wide thick thing here. You got to have some basketball player hands to get up in here where I can support this with my fingers here. So. I like this robust, skinny little thing here. It's a lot better rest for this, for spindle turning. Um, that's probably really good for bowls. It's a nice, big, heavy, fat rest, but um, that ain't what I need here. So I'm just real lightly kind of supporting this with my middle finger there. So you could virtually just keep that diameter and keep coming all the way up if you wanted to. Um, that's up to you. You know, kind of design is is your thing, and you can 
you know, draw it out, um, or you can kind of wing it like, kind of like I do. Um, I'm going to make it just a little bit longer. We'll try for a decorative item here, maybe a little bead. All right. So that's my first segment, and um, this is when it would be a good time to go ahead and sand that, and get that out of the way if you're going to sand it. So uh, I'm going to leave it as it is, and we'll start on the second segment. Right there. All right, they, now, what do you call this? A beading tool. Beading and parting tool is what the English did. It's just a square piece of stock, and it's sharpened the same way as a regular old parting tool. And um, I've never really sharpened on one of those fancy diamond wheels till tonight, and it really threw me off because it doesn't throw any sparks up. I missed the sparks. That's, yeah. Hey, but it does put a really fine edge on there. I'll give it that. But I, old timers. Yeah. Jimmy, did you get a diamond wheel yet? No? Brian, no? Me neither. I mean, that's $200 I saved. <laughs> Okay. Maybe go for a little bit more delicate new here. Segment number two, I think, is always the most difficult because you're in the middle where you can get the most selection. Don't you find that, Brian? Middle segment's the hardest? Because once I get past this, it's cakewalk up here. Closer you get to the chuck, it gets easy. Out here, you've got all this mass back here, so that one's pretty easy. This one right here is the hard one for me. You know, if you're as good as Brian is, eh, it's all easy. You getting all this, Charlie? You gonna be able, you gonna be able to make your wife a nice Christmas ornament? Okay. Well, Colonel, if you didn't have a plan, no one would. No. <laughs> but this the wood I had. Is you know. Um,
You know, I haven't really tried to do one of these finials out of the plastic. I would think that would be ridiculously hard. Now, the bodies like that one I did out of the, you know, the bottle stopper blank. Um, and I liked it. Pardon me? Yeah. Yeah, you can hollow those. You can hollow those blank. Just the same as wood. Except for... It doesn't break into little pieces, and you got these strands coming out that are that long. They're a pain in the neck, really. Um, okay, so I should make this one a little bit longer than that one. Yeah? Or this one longer than that one. You know what? Roll your own. You know, do what looks good to you. Touche. If you got it, roll it, you know. But you, you kind of get the idea here that I'm just doing little pieces at a time. And leaving the mass back here, that's what's supporting all this. And just taking it a little bit at a time. And not getting too um, rambunctious about it. Um... You always got to have a catch in every demo, right? That was it. Let's see. Okay, that was longer. Kind of a little on the theme. I'll just put me another bead. Practice my beads in my cove. So you can see why um, you know a lot of us have always stressed the foundation of having good strokes and and learning to do beads and coves. It really teaches you the tool control. And if you don't have cool tool control turning, it's drive you crazy. So, and and having you know kind of a light touch with these kinds of things, and I've always felt that women make some of the better turners that I've ever known, because um, men we were the hunters, right? So it was stab it. And women, you know, they gathered and picked the berries, so they don't have this stabbing instinct that we have. You know, to everything's got to be hammered. Okay, so at this point, what I'm going to probably do is I'm, I probably need to go ahead and get um, what the top end of this thing's going to look like because I need uh, I need my five eighths up here somewhere um, to fit in that ornament body. it back. back still in one piece Let's see about that all right um, how are we doing on time 845 so I need to get this done don't I all right so I'm gonna make sure yeah that's five eighths there I am. All right. Well, I used a 5 8 drill. There's a 5 8 So this will kind of work the size. Um, you can sharpen these. I grind 
Well, this one I don't look like I did. Usually I grind the side a little bit. Usually you have to grind these sides a little bit to get those square. And then and just grind on the top here and give me a little edge right there. And um, Undercut it. Uh, on this, on this shoulder here. Come here. Tight. Uh, yeah. You want to, but I'm gonna cut that down because I don't want that big old fat thing. You know, I would really ought to be paying attention to is maybe how big it is right, right there. You know, it should match up with that right there. So that would be it right here. Yeah. So um, I'm, hopefully I've got that size pretty close. The 5 eighths wrench fits on it, kind of. I usually, you know, usually this you can make a little smaller. And. You're talking about that right there, that shoulder right there. Yeah. I guess I have to do that left-handed. I don't even like that. Maybe with this. There we go. Oh, that's my super duper hollowing tool. All right, so. Cohen going brain dead on this shape right here, Brian, so don't get... <laughs> Now, I probably shouldn't mess around with any of that. Look at that. Can you see that moving? It's just pretty thin. You know, if I probably go and touch that with that tool, it's probably going to just blow up. So we'll just call that good enough. Um, so I probably should have parted that off. Well, I'm going to do it now. So um, 
We're going to separate it right here or thereabouts. Okay, and part it off back here. Please fit. An ornament. Quick and dirty, usually at home, may take me two hours. So you got the condensed version. Um, any questions? I mean, and, and I just urge you, on this part, kind of get in your mind what you want it to look like. Maybe even sketch it out. If you want to do a storyboard on it, do it. Um, you know, I didn't come in with any kind of a prearranged plan of what that would end up looking like. I just did it as we went. So it's pretty nasty, actually. Yeah, you know, it's a, it's a demo. So um, the idea is to show you the technique. Yes, sir. Yeah, if you use green wood, it's probably going to go all over the place. Yeah. But if you do it thin enough, you know, maybe it won't move quite so much. But yeah, it would affect the fit for sure. Charlie. Would I talk about it? Yeah, you can do that. Yeah, you basically, you go to the grinder, you take your little Allen wrench, and you, you know, grind it kind of like what I ground these. Put a little, you know, a little round on the end there. Take off the bottom of the nose, grind that back a little bit, back and forth like that. Put a nice little curve or radius around the tip of that. Uh, you can turn a handle for it. I just use vice grips, <laughs> you know, because I know I'm going to lose a little Allen wrench. Um, yeah, it, it's, it's a fun little project, and um, this one isn't very pretty, but on the other hand, you know, I don't expect much. So, uh, Preston, I even, you know, I tried to get John Horn to come and play Santa, um, but you're the next best thing. So, uh, can I get a ho, ho, ho? Ho, 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 Merry Christmas. Those are real live vintage sleigh bells from New England. They're probably well over 120 years old. So. And the workmanship on them is incredible. They're just, there's all this little etching and stuff on them. And um, they're fabulous. So, you know, that's what happens when you have a mother antique dealer. You end up with stupid sleigh bells you don't know what to do with. All right, thank you very much.